Guild Cinema, to me, means a place to gather, to collect our thoughts, to watch things, to be invigorated by, by media and cinema that's different than what you'll see at the megaplexes. An independent voice, an underrepresented voice, something that you're not going to see anywhere else, something that has a vitality, it's beyond the routine of what we're used to watching at movie theaters. Independent films, by their very definition, tend to be underrepresented as far as the uh, media watching landscape goes. You have to kind of go out to the margins to find some of it, or you have to work harder at it because it's not really spoon-fed to you. And so I want to provide sort of an infrastructure, a home, a platform, or whatever you want to call it for these kind of independent voices because I feel like it's integral to a healthy society to have different viewpoints, to have different stories, different narratives, to have things that challenge us. Sometimes it's, it takes more courageousness to show certain kind of films here as far as the content or how it may reflect a certain political or social belief that a chain theater might not want to touch, uh, that m might be too controversial. Well, we're not afraid of that. We're not afraid of that. Well, a lot of it is this old school notion of just providing a different kind of movie and having a setting where there's not a lot of commercials for you know other businesses not related to us before the screenings. We just play the trailers of the movies we're going to play and then we get right to the feature. So that sort of overly commercialized atmosphere isn't really here in a place like the Guild Cinema. There are a number of ways that, that we research films. Um, we deal mostly with uh, independent film distributors and each of them have, have a website. So we routinely go on their websites and look at what, uh, what they have and we talk about it. And um, uh, an important part of it is, is having a good intuition about what we think our audience will respond to, what they'll come see. When we reopened it, there were a few changes. My business partner at the, at the time, Peter Kahnheim, he was very big on the idea of having a two-month calendar, having a printed calendar schedule. And I love the idea too because I remember the Guild Cinema in the 80s and the 90s, you could pick up these schedules of what was coming up. And I don't think very many other theaters did that. It was like a newspaper. It was something you could stick on your refrigerator. Each different uh, group of owners, it, it's been a little different as far as uh, their philosophy, uh, w how they define um, the kind of theater like this and the kind of programming that, that they do for it. Well, one magic story that happened at the Guild Cinema for me is when we were faced with the task of replacing the chairs. It's something we really had to do. The chairs were getting uncomfortable. We were thinking of our patrons' comfort. And so we needed to replace all 150 seats. And it was one of the most expensive endeavors I've ever done in my life. And so what we did is we had people sponsor a seat where they don't own the seat, but they sponsor it for X amount of dollars and they get a name tag on the back of it. And I thought that it would be maybe a couple of months before we get all, in this case, 117 seats uh, filled up. Actually, it went in about a week or two. And so this was extremely flattering. This told me that people did appreciate the, us and we needed to respect that. So that was really a magical moment at the Guild Cinema. Hopefully, uh, people will still be interested in coming to see films in a movie theater, and they won't be so seduced by their laptops, their, de their devices, you know, streaming things on, uh, on the internet. Um, that, that's a big concern uh, for us. So we hope that, that people never tire of coming to the theater to watch films and being part of a communal experience in, in watching what they do and talking with each other maybe afterwards and talking with us.